Hello, everyone. I hope that you're doing well. I want to give you an update on the Oak Mulgi case that involves the four men that were killed and dismembered. That um, and there ended up being an arrest, right? But it wasn't exactly for the murder. So that's what I'm going to show you right now, right? And I'm going to give you guys uh, up to date on what's happening. So. First at five o'clock, newly unsealed court documents this afternoon say the person of interest in the murders of four men in Okmulgee confessed that he killed them and cut them up because he believed they were stealing from him. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lori Fulbright. And I'm Craig Day. The affidavit says Joe Kennedy also had one of the victim's bicycles with him six days after the murders. News on Six's Jordan Tidwell joins us live from Okmulgee with the latest. Jordan. Craig and Lori, Joe Kennedy was supposed to be in court today, but the hearing got postponed until next Monday. And his attorneys say they deserve to know why Kennedy's bond was $10 million. And the judge agreed to unseal the affidavit related to his bond. It says investigators believe the men were killed on October 9th at Kennedy's scrapyard. It says victim Mark Chastain had his cell phone on him and records show he arrived at the scrapyard around 5.40 p.m. And gunshots were reported 40 minutes later. It says Kennedy left the scrapyard wearing a different shirt 90 minutes after that. It says he came back and went to the vacant lot next to his scrapyard for hours overnight. And that's where blood and items belonging to Mark Chastain were found. And the victim's families were at court today before this information was released and were frustrated by the delays in the case. And for things to be getting pushed back and then, you know, nothing happening. It's exhausting. It's very exhausting. Um, and it's frustrating. And the affidavit says six days after the murder, Kennedy told a friend he murdered the men and then drove to Florida. The DA says since Kennedy fled before, they're afraid he would do it again. And that's why they have asked for such a high bond. Now, at this time, no one has been charged for the murders. Live in Okmulgee, Jordan Tidwell, Oklahoma Zone. News on six. Which makes a lot of sense, right? That there would be such a high amount uh, because he has fled. So that makes a lot of sense, you know, um, for the defense to want to know, the lawyers to want to know, well, why is it so high? Mm, I mean, come on, come on. So that one was December 1st, right? That, that that came out where they unsealed the affidavit. And then... You've got this that happens on December 5th. While murder, murder charges against a man accused of killing and dismembering four men in Okmulgee. First here at 5 o'clock, the Okmulgee County DA charges a scrapyard owner with four counts of murder. Thanks for joining us. I'm Craig Day. And I'm Lori Fulbright. They charge Joe Kennedy, who is accused of shooting and then dismembering four people back in October. News on 6's Jordan Tidwell is live with the latest. Jordan? Craig and Lori, the Okmulgee County DA says she is still deciding if she will seek the death penalty in this case. And Joe Kennedy has now been charged in the death of Billy Chastain, his brother Mark, Mike Sparks, and Alex Stevens. And the DA explained the details of the investigation today and how the four men went to Kennedy's scrapyard on October 9th. She says Kennedy was also there that night trying to catch people stealing from him. She says a deputy who lives nearby heard about 10 to 12 gunshots that night. And the affidavit David says the men had been cut at the waist and one victim's was missing his arms. And Kennedy was named a person of interest early on in this case. And the DA explains why it took so long to find file charges. We have no evidence to support the notion that he acted with anyone else. And she says at this point, they believe Kennedy acted alone and there is no reason to believe he had help from anyone else. I'm live in Okmulgee, Jordan Tidwell, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. So, December 5th, he was officially charged with four counts of murder. And they gave a little bit of details, right? So, I'm sorry about that. Um, but a little bit of details to what, what all um, he did to them. I don't know. It's kind of like he started 
removing limbs and then realized it was too messy or too much work or I don't I don't know what I don't know what changed his mind but um, and then I will play this one this uh, says that the um, that the county district attorney ends up speaking here after uh, Joseph Kennedy was charged this is cell phones and surveillance video. Tonight, we are learning new details about the evidence that led the Okmulgee County District Attorney to file charges against the person of interest in the shooting deaths of four men. Joe Kennedy, you see right here, is now being held without bond on four counts of first-degree murder. I'm Shay Rossi. And I'm Sarah Whaley. Glad you're with us tonight. Fox 23's Alex Cash is at the courthouse in Okmulgee tonight with what the DA said in her news conference today. Alex. Well, the details against Kennedy were laid out here at the Oak Mulgee County Courthouse earlier on in a press conference. The Oak Mulgee County District Attorney said there was a lot of moving parts put into these charges and that she needed to make sure that enough evidence was gathered that proved beyond a reasonable doubt that Kennedy was guilty of murder. We have filed charges against Joseph Lloyd Kennedy earlier today for the murders of Billy Jack Chastain, Mark Chastain, Michael Sparks, and Alex Ray Stevens. That's the moment Oak Mulgee County District Attorney Carol Iske announced Joe Kennedy is facing four counts of premeditated murder. Kennedy was seen at the Oak Mulgee County District Court Monday, handcuffed, staring at the ground, wearing an orange jumpsuit. In a press conference, Iske went into the graphic details of what the DA's office says happened to the four men after they set off on their bikes on October 9th. It was discovered that all four victims had suffered gunshot wounds and had been transected at the waist. Additionally, Michael Sparks had both arms removed. Iski says the four men had gone to Kennedy's scrapyard to steal, and that's where they were shot. A defendant told officers he'd been experiencing thefts at his scrapyard on 20th Street, and that he personally surveilled the scrapyard on Sunday, October the 9th in an attempt to catch the perpetrators. The DA says Kennedy gave his girlfriend's son a bike that was later identified as Billy Chastain's and admitted to his girlfriend that he killed the men. He told her they were all against him and he lost it and he just started shooting. She said that he told her after he shot them that he cut them up. Officers also searched Kennedy's scrapyard and property surrounding it, where they found a black wagon belonging to Mark Chastain, along with shell casings and other evidence. Officers located blood evidence on the ground, a broken set of dentures, and other personal items located in a field that surrounded the scrapyard. They also located a tree which had been struck recently by a bullet. A sheriff's deputy who lives nearby the scrapyard reported hearing 10 to 12 shots fired the evening the men went missing. And evidence from Kennedy's cell phone also places him near the bridge where the men's bodies were found in the water. Well, the Oak Mulgee police chief says over a thousand man hours have already been logged in this case. And he says the investigation is still ongoing. The DA said they are considering whether or not they're going to seek the death penalty in this case. I'm working on that for you for Fox 23 News at 10. Covering news that matters. I'm Alex Cash, Fox 23 News. Yeah, quite a bit there, quite a bit there. So uh, I just looked up, I, I think it was what, what was the word ultimately that it was uh, trisected. I was like, wait, exactly, let me, does that really mean what I think it means? Yeah, it does. It really does mean to um, basically divide into threes, typically, um, and, she, and she had said at the waist, I'm like, Okay, so it wasn't that he changed his mind then because he definitely went ahead and did that on all of them, it said. So, <sighs> terrible. What an awful case. Ugh. Oh, it's awful to hear these details too as a family of every single one of these men. It's so terrible to hear.
We begin at 10 with breaking news. Fox 23 has confirmed a judge ordered the man suspected of murdering four Okmulgee men to pay damages to the victim's families. I'm Shay Rossi. And I'm Sarah Whaley. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. This comes just a day after we told you the Okmulgee County DA filed four first-degree murder charges against Joe Kennedy. Police say they have evidence to prove Kennedy killed, dismembered, and dumped the bodies of Mark and Billy Chastain, Alex Stevens, and Mike Sparks in a river. We reported in October when the families of those victims filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Kennedy and his wife in civil court. Since Kennedy did not respond to that lawsuit, today a judge ordered the couple to pay a default judgment. A hearing is scheduled for February to determine how much the Kennedys will have to pay. That's great, right? That right there is great news. Good, good. They should all have to. Anybody that does uh, something that they, I mean, it's kind of interesting, right? That currently it's alleged it's not. And so I don't know, right? If he has to begin that currently or if it's only if he's found guilty or how exactly they're working that, but I feel that anybody that's committed a crime against another should, uh, certainly if it's uh, taking life, you should, but that is just an opinion of mine. <laughs> um, that's all that is. And so I brought you over here. Um, it says that he, he has demonstrated a pattern of a violent behavior. And so um reported missing yeah it says that he was a person of interest in the case for nearly two months before he had been formally charged on monday the okmulgee county district attorney and investigators on the case held a press conference to read his charging affidavit which they gave uh, like a minute something right here <clears throat> and then Additional to evidence specific to the slings of the four men, the affidavit alleges that Kennedy has demonstrated a pattern of violent behavior over a period of years. Prosecutor filed an application to accelerate the 10-year differing sentence Kennedy received in 2012 shooting case in which he was accused of shooting at two people he thought were stealing from his property, hating one of them. He dismissed the application to accelerate upon filing the murder charges on Monday, but investigators believe they found an additional similar case. More recently, while investigating these homicides, investigators interviewed a man who reported he was walking on railroad tracks that run through the defendant's scrapyard and was confronted by the defendant with a firearm and ultimately was shot, but survived. That alleged victim did not report the shooting, Okmulgee police chief said on Tuesday, but he had scars that might corroborate his account during a voluntary interview the morning before the bodies were discovered kennedy told police he had been experiencing thefts at his property and was there on october 9th quote to attempt to catch the perpetrators the affidavit states although he alleged that based on phone calls he and the victims were at the salvage yard at the same time he denied ever having contact with them other details of the case, some of which were made public for the first time on Monday, include that investigators used a location tracking app to chart the path of Mark Chastain's phone that evening. It reportedly was tracked inside the salvage yard between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. and remained there until about 6 p.m. when it traveled to the Murphy USA gas station US-75 before ending transmission at another salvage yard on Kennedy's off of highway about two miles north of Sculter. The affidavit stated, surveillance video from the gas station showed only Kennedy standing next to his blue Chrysler PT Cruiser, according to the affidavit. An off-duty sheriff deputy who lived nearby reported hearing 10 to 12 high-powered rifle shots fired about 6.20 p.m. southwest of his home, which was the direction of the salvage yard. It wasn't immediately clear when that report was made. Surveillance video from the business across from Kennedy's 20th Street salvage yard reportedly showed Kennedy parking his PT Cruiser near the yard and walking inside 
about 3 p.m. October 9th before leaving about 8 p.m. wearing a different shirt. She returned in a gray Toyota Tundra, uh, a family vehicle. And they said at about 10, 15 p.m. and parked in the same place before walking to the north, returning to the truck and leaving again. He repeated the same cycle twice before appearing to drive into a field to the west of the salvage yard about 5 a.m. October 10th. A pickup can be seen exiting the field about 6.20 a.m. and traveling west on Sharp Road, presumably towards the bridge, the affidavit alleged. Kennedy's phone records likely place him in the general area of the bridge where the victim's bodies were discovered. <clears throat> when the bodies were found, investigators searched a, served a search warrant at Kennedy's 20th Street salvage yard. About 150 yards north of its north northern fence line, they found an area with a numerous 7.62 caliber shell casings near blood a tree struck with a bullet and some of Mark Chastain's personal items, the affidavit stated. Investigators recovered the bullet from the tree, and they also found a wagon believed to be Mark Chastain's in the field where uh, west of the salvage yard. That evening, Kennedy parked his PT cruiser behind a warehouse in Morris and took a black Toyota Tundra belonging to a friend and drove to Gore before heading to Daytona Beach Shores, Florida. A woman who was in a romantic relationship with Kennedy told investigators Kennedy came to her Gore home October 10th, acting strangely, and left a bicycle for her son. <laughs> Detectives later determined the bicycle belonged to Billy Jack Chastain. The woman said Kennedy returned agitated about 3 a.m. October 15th and told her he was leaving. When she asked the defendant what was wrong, he told her that they were all against him and he lost it and just started shooting. He told her that after he shot them, he cut them up. Kennedy was arrested in Florida October 17th in the truck, which his friend reported stolen and has been extradited back to Oklahoma. He is being held without bond in Okmulgee County Jail during the, the later searches of each truck, detectives found blood evidence that forensic investigators determined November 1st, each held at least one, had or at least two separate and distinct male DNA profiles. And one matched a partial profile recovered from Billy Jack Chastain's body. I understand this is a very high profile case and of great interest to many. However, it's a case that needs to be tried in a court of law and subject to the rules of evidence, not in the court of public opinion. The rules of professional responsibility limit the information I'm able to give out to those facts already a matter of public record. All other facts will be disclosed during the course of prosecution of this matter. Wow. Wow. So it doesn't sound like they really want to give up anything else. Or that anything else would really be coming out. So it's rather interesting. <clears throat> but uh, there we have it. I mean, it, it's good. He got charged for, officially charged for the murderers. That's great. It's somebody's being held accountable. We all kind of uh, knew what direction that was pointing with him. And they seem to have enough evidence to be able to do that. And I hope that they have a nice strong case that that will allow uh, um, a conviction and ultimately to get some form of justice for these families. I'm thankful that he's being forced to have to pay to the families. That's really incredible. It makes me very happy as well. And so it's it's good it's it's heading in the right direction it for sure is i think the police did a great job um it's good this is heading in in the right direction for sure so i will let you know if i do hear anything else that comes out about the case i don't know that we will but you know typically some stuff starts to come out and so it won't be them technically but as he has court dates different um events throughout the court in the hearings are going to be released. So I'll update you on the court hearings themselves as we go along into this. 
But um, I just wanted to give you the update on that. I hope that you all are having an awesome day or night, depending where you're at. And I will talk to you all in my next video. Have a good one, everyone.